All right, today we're excited to announce GPT 4.1, which is a family of models in the API that were trained just for developers. ChatGPT has released 4.1, which is supposed to be a pretty decent step up from ChatGPT 4.0. Check it out. And it's three models. So it's GPT 4.1, GPT 4.1 mini, and for the first time, GPT 4.1 Nano, which is our smallest, fastest, and cheapest model ever. Now, these models are better than GPT 4.0 on just about every dimension. They're even, they even meet or beat GPT 4.5 in a bunch of key ways. And for the first time, they have long context. So all three models, even the Nano model, can handle up to a million tokens of context. Basically, they also released a lot of other benchmarks, as you see in the video, about them talking about how good 4.1 is compared to 4.0. One of the notable improvements is that it's a little bit better at coding, not just completing things, but having things be done in a stylistic way. Uh, Sweebench is a really great eval for evaluating this sort of performance. Kind of the model is dropped into a Python repo, it's given a task, it's got to explore, write some code, write some tests. And we see that GPT 4.1 is a significant improvement over our past models. It reaches 55% accuracy, up from 33% from our previous GPT 4.0 model. And we think this is pretty impressive for a non-reasoning model. It even beats 01 and 03 mini. But uh, Sweebench is all Python. And we've also improved this model's ability to code in other languages. And Ader Polyglot is a great benchmark for that specifically. It's got a bunch of languages, but also what's cool is that it's got a whole in diff format. Um, so sometimes developers want the model to rewrite the entire file, but sometimes you want it to produce diffs. And that's useful when you want a faster application. You know, you save latency on the tokens that are not changed. You also save money, right? On, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so here you can see that we've really closed the gap on whole and diff performance. And we've also doubled GBD 4.1's diff performance from 4.0. Um, you can also see that MINI is a really significant improvement over GBT 4.0 MINI. So we think both of these models will be a great, uh, great model for any kind of coding tasks. Um, so those are coding benchmarks, but there's also kind of the intangibles of when you're using a model. You know, when you're creating a front end, is it functional? Is it beautiful? Does it nail the mark? And so for that, we have uh, a little example of a flashcard app I've been making. You're learning Hindi. Yeah, working on it. Uh, and so I've got, uh, you know, a prompt here. It's pretty complicated. I'm asking for this app pretty specifically. I want a nice 3D animation when you click on the flashcard. Um, and so when I give this prompt to GBT 4.0, this is what I get. Um, it follows some of the instructions and, and some of the app is functional, um, but you know, we really trained GBT 4.1 to do better. And that model, you can see it looks Ooh. way better. It's discovered colors. Uh, <laughs> it can also do the 3D animation. Um, so we think you're really gonna like this improvement to front end coding. And this was just based on that prompt that you gave it? Just one prompt and you get back an entire where they had the flashcard app have different styles into it. It highlighted green when it flips and then have like checkmark green and the incorrect red, which are like good quality of life things. Not only that, I think the major thing that they talked about was the context window where it went from like 150,000 tokens to a million, which is pretty big. That's like a mime. So if ChatGPT could take in maybe like a short novel, it can take in a full blown series novels given that comparison which is very good and not only that they even have this test where they talked about it being like a needle in a haystack type of example where even with this larger context it can still do really good check it out you saw in this example they had some code that they injected or a, a string that they put into this NASA document from 1995 which was over 8,000 lines and they asked ChatGPT, what was change line? What was the line that had, that was not HTTPS? And it was able to find it out of all those lines. It did take a while, but that's still really good to think about. Also, they have better coherence when it comes to guidance, where they talked about having ChatGPT be more in line with what you say and what you want and put it into the prompt when you're using ChatGPT. Check it out. Here, we are gonna riff on the previous demo that we saw.
But this one is gonna be more focused on how an API developer prompts our model. So I've again selected the 4.1 model here. And here, the, the application's personality is of a log analyst assistant. We tell it how the input data will be structured. So we tell it it will be within these log data uh, tags and how the user's query would be structured. So that would be in the query tag. And then we have a set of rules. So these are kind of the instructions that a, an API developer would provide to the model. So they are saying that only answer questions about the content within log data. Uh, the question should always be formatted within the query tags. If any of those things are not true, please respond with an error message. The response should be in an XML format, and I've given it some very light guidance on how the XML format should look like. So it should have some tags uh, like result, final answer, references, and so on. Nice. Yeah, this looks a lot like the system messages we find developers use often. You know, they're pretty meaty. Yeah. Um, and I've preloaded the log file here. So this is the trimmed version of the same log file we saw earlier. Cool. So I first made a request uh, saying how many requests were made by fnal.gov. And it rejected it because it was not formatted within the query tags. Now I'm going to make the same request within query tags and see how it does. OK, now it was able to find the two references that are within the log file. So this is the kind of interaction we see quite a bit uh, with 4.0, where users want a certain behavior, and especially certain behavior not to happen. And the model sometimes misses on it. So I have an example. I made the same query to 4.0. And it answered the question instead of saying that it needs to be wrapped in query tags. You saw in that clip, they had, had to put the question within query tags, which are basically like a beginning and ending, like a period, like a point where you can denote whether something is beginning and ending using these type of symbols, basically. It's a big thing in HTML. So if you're a programmer, you definitely know what this is. But if you don't know, just take it like that. They're just portion of text where it denotes the beginning and ending of something and so if you didn't have these things it would not take the query as well as it'll spit out an error telling you hey you need to have this within these query tags which is pretty good when you think about it when it comes to strict coherence when you want data formatted in a certain type of way that's not even the best the best thing a lot of people are talking about is the pricing that gpt has of course three different levels when it comes to 4.1 they have 4.1 funny and 4.1 nano but the smallest nano size one is the most cost effective and it is 10 cents for the input and 0 0.025 cents for cached inputs and for the output it's about 40 cents for the nano it does text image in and text out which is this is 50% faster than ChatGPT 4.0 in comparison to 4.1 Nano. Mini input cost is 40 cents, cached input is 10 cents, and output is $1.60. So it is a definitely a jump in cost when it comes to Nano to Mini. And it also can do text image and text out, but it is 40% faster than GPT 4.0. So Nano is actually the fastest with 4.1 input being $2, cached input being 50 cents and the output being a whopping eight dollars which is super expensive as far as like the latency for just the regular 4.1 it says similar to t4.0 and these are all pretty fast it's not like gpt 4.0 and for and the normal 4.1 is going to be that much more like response times are really good as is even though Nano is the fastest one and the most cost effective with low latency, 4.1 is still the smartest model for like tech comes to coding and everything else. And the mini is the balance between the Nano and 4.1, of course. Also, what they kind of hint was this Quasar. When the lady was talking about ET, he had a slip, which didn't really seem like a slip, but she called it a Quasar, which references the Quasar that were leading in the arenas when it comes to these AIs that nobody knew about, but they were doing amazing things. They're really good at coding and it had a million token context window. And so that the fact that she called 4.1 a Quasar, I think pretty much confirmed that 4.1 is the Quasar that everybody was going crazy over, that it's a really great model overall. Kind of the intelligence by latency curves here and the Quasar, or sorry, that 4.1 series <laughs> So it is interesting to see that like, you know, OpenAI and Claude also just kind of release models on some of these fringe, like 
famous websites i would say where if you're not like on the cutting edge of ai using these websites you probably wouldn't even use these websites but the fact that they let them go ahead of time and let people use them and then let people decide if this is good or bad kind of how well these models are built out to be i think this is definitely going to be a game changer or just a lot of different things. Coding, for example, I think it will actually give you a little bit more flair for you to be able to code whatever you want. Also, when it comes to instruction following, I think this may hurt people who are trying to use ChatGPT more maliciously. Like it was a whole scandal about DeepSeek using ChatGPT's data, they were prompting it and getting the responses out and using that to train DeepSeek, which is a rumor. I'm not sure if it was ever confirmed or not, but that was the rumor. But now since GPT has strict instruction following, I doubt the 4.1 will really output anything that GPT or OpenAI doesn't want. As well as this is good for a lot of coding and data analytics, because if you have people using your product and they're using AI, but you only want them to input data in a certain type of way, it could definitely help you run analytics on this data because you at least now know the type of data that's being used and input it in the format that it is in. So you can really format it out, export it however you want to. They also partner with Windsurf AI and it's gonna be free all week to use with Windsurf next seven days. And they will be cutting down the price for Windsurf therefore afterwards. I think this is in competition with Gemini 2.5 Pro where they use Firebase, where they have their own integrated model for everybody to use for free right now and 4.1 is very resource intensive so partnering with a, another company that's a competitor against like a firebase or cursor kind of makes sense to me tell me what your thoughts are down below do you think this is really amazing or do you think this is kind of underwhelming it's not a huge upgrade from 4.0 and you're thinking something like a lot more grander maybe some image generation that you could use within the api if you're not getting that and you're sad either way if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest ai news tech news robotics news quantum news you should definitely like and subscribe with that being said your boy dex nice there out